What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you how to create a trading bot, but in this case, in the volatility index market. There is a lot of people that ask me, hey man, how do I create a bot here? How do I create a bot there? I'm going to show you how to make the bots general. So you can basically create a, a bot and that bot and that bot will work on any market. But before I show you that, I have to show you two things. So let me open first the GitHub in which you are going to find the code. So you just come here to trading bot, then to MQL5. And then here you have the, uh, 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 let's see if I find it, volatility index bot here, this one. So this is the bot that we are going to build right now. The second thing that I have to show you is my website. I'm going to do a little bit of a spam. But I'm just going to tell you that here you have my course and that you can get it for free. Look, once you create an account, you will have a friend code. If someone registers with that friend code, you are going to have a, a subscription to any course for two days. So yeah, guys, you can get it for free. So yeah, enough spam. Let's build this bot. So the first thing that we have to do is that we have to open MT5, MetaTrader 5. So we open MT5 and now what we have to do is that we have to go to the IDE and here in the IDE, let's remove this, we are going to click here on new, expert advisor, let's give it a name, volatility index bot, okay, next, finish and okay. Now we take all these and we remove everything. So let's just start by the beginning. This bot is going to be actually super simple, but yeah, I want you, I want to show you how to make every bot general for every possible market, which is something very simple. So the bot is going to work with two emas, and once there is a cross with the emas, then we are going to open a buy or a sell depending on the cross. So we are going to have an emma, which is going to be fast, is going to be the handler of the indicator. Remember that in MQL5, we need handlers. And then we are going to have a slow one. So we have two handles. Okay, now that we have these two handles, we are going to need a place to store the data that that indicator has. So we need to create an array. And this array is going to be called Emma Fast. And then here we are going to declare another array, which is going to be the Emma Slow. That's it, that's right, perfect. Okay, so now we should initialize all these things. Where do we initialize this? There is an event called on init, which is something like a function. So here on this function, what is well, this function? What it does is that it gets it gets executed just once at the beginning when we start the bot. So that is the perfect time to initialize the indicators. So let's initialize the first one. And how do we do this? It is actually very simple. We call the function IMA. So this will return the handle of that indicator. And here it is asking us for the symbol name. This is the important thing. Okay. By putting this, what I'm telling the bot is that, okay, if I put the bot to work, I don't know, in, in this boom index, or I put it in the EURUSD, whatever, wherever, then the bot is going to work on that. So by using this, you are making your bot general. It can work anywhere. So yeah, guys, I want you to understand that. The same happens here with this, with the period. By putting this, it doesn't matter which period you put that your bot is going to work on that period. It truly doesn't matter which period, just that. Okay, knowing this, let's continue. Now, well, the time frame. The thing that I was talking about before was the time frame. Now, the period of the uh, moving average is going to be 14, the first one. There is no go there is no shift. And then the mode is mode Emma. And this is applied to the price close. Perfect. So now we have to do the exact same thing, but for the slow one. So here, instead of having, well, initializing the Emma fast, we are going to initialize the Emma slow. And the only difference are the, well, the only difference is the period that's the, that this Emma uses. Okay, now that we have these two variables initialized, there can be issues. How do we check if we have those issues? We are going to put here an if statement and we are going to say, okay, 
if the Emma fast handle is invalid or the Emma slow handle is invalid, then we have a problem. And what we are going to do is that here we are going to print and we are going to say there is an error. Let's put here error. And let's say just that the indicators not loaded. That's right. Okay. And here we have to return it and stop the execution of this function. And we are going to say that we are going to return init failed. Okay. In any other case, in the case that this works fine, then we have to initialize these arrays. We have to make them as series. So how do we do that? We are going to call array set as series. We are going to put here emma fast. We send true. And then we have to do the exact same thing, but for the emma slow. That's right. And after doing these things, now the bot is initialized. So we can do the following return init succeeded. Perfect. Okay, but what if we close the bot? Do we have to release something? Of course. How do we check that? We are going to use another event, which is the on the init. Okay, as you can see here, this receives a reason that we are not going to use, but it is useful because the bot can be closed due to different reasons. So, for example, if you change the time frame, if you change whatever, then the bot is going to get closed. So, if the well, if you close it in one way, then you are going to have one reason or another. So, depending on the reason, you can do some things or others. But in our case, we just want to release everything. Uh, yeah, if it closed, if the bot gets closed. So, how do we do this? We are going to check first, for example, in the fast handle, we are going to say, okay, if this handle is not even valid, it means that it's loaded uh, fine, then we are going to call the function indicator release, and we are going to send Emma fast. Okay, and now it is actually the exact same thing, but for the Emma slow. So we take here a slow, and then here we are going to take the slow, perfect. Okay, so now it is time to start with the logic of the bot. We have all the initialization and the initialization. So now it is going. To, well, we are going to start with the logic behind the bot. How do we do this? Actually, guys, this is very simple. Void on tick. This is another event, and this event works on every price change. So this is actually very good because this allows us that. Once there is a price change, by the way, this is not the volatility index. Here, I'm going to load the volatility index. Yeah. So, whenever there's a price change, we are going to check if some conditions are met so that we can buy, uh, open a buy, open a sell, whatever. So, on every tick, what we are going to do is that first we are going to load the information of the indicators. So, here it is asking us for the indicator handle. Remember also that in order to load, the information you have to use the copy buffer function. So the indicator handle is going to be Emma fast, for example. Then the buffer number, since <clears throat> the Emma only has one thing, then the buffer number is zero. So we leave it like this. Then the starting position from where do we want to start taking things? If we put here a zero, we will start taking things from the very last candle, the one which is not closed. And then and that can uh, yeah that can give us problems because we can uh, have fake signals. So <clears throat> one way to prevent fake signals is just by loading the data from the candle that is previous to the last one. Okay. So yeah, we load that candle. Now we are going to need to load two candles because in order to detect a cross, we need two candles, two values on each indicator. And then we have to say, where do we want to store things? So, for example, we have to store Emma fast. Well, we are going to use the Emma fast array. It is the exact same thing for the Emma slow, but we are going to use the other variables. Here we put Emma slow. And OK, now that we have this, what we have to do is that we need to check some conditions. And these conditions are, first of all, is there a buy cross? If there is a buy cross, we are going to open a position. 
Also, we have to check if we are in a new candle. Because imagine that we open a position in this candle and in this same candle it gets closed. So that uh, condition may still be there. So we are going to open another position in that candle and we don't want that. So yeah, also we have to check that the operations are closed. Okay, so okay, this is the condition for the, uh, yeah, for the for the buy. But also we have to do the same thing for the sell cross. But in this case, it is sell cross. Okay, but we have to create everything. We have to create all this. How do we do this? These are functions. And as you can see, these, func well, these uh, functions are here called inside an if. So this has to return a Boolean variable. So here, a Boolean value, so, sorry. So here, what we are going to do is that we are going to declare those functions by cross. And here we put return. And OK, how do we detect a by cross? It is actually something very simple. Let me insert, well, yeah. Let me insert to moving average so we can see that in a better way. OK, so this is the first one period we are going to put. 14 blue okay and then we are going to insert the other one which is the long one the fast well the uh, slow one so for example here you can see that there is a buy cross how do i know this i should have changed this color so let me change this color very yeah or not not this one <laughs> let's put this one okay so as you can see the blue which is the fast one once it is well when it is below the other one it is below the the slow one and then after the next candle it is above it means that we have a buy cross check that at the beginning it is below the the slow one and then it is above so that is a buy cross here the sell cross the sell cross it is the opposite at the beginning it is above and then it is below that's it very simple so how do we detect that Okay, we have to say, okay, Emma fast. We are going to access the previous value. So we said that the, um, the Emma fast must be below. So if the previous value, which is the one, the actual value is the zero. So the previous value, value, sorry, is less than the previous value of the slow. And the current value of the fast is above the current value of the slow, then we have a buy cross, as simple as that. Actually, the sell cross, as I said, it is the opposite, and it is very simple. So what we are going to do is that instead of being at, uh, at the beginning below, we have to be above, and then we have to be below, as simple as that. Okay, so how do we do now this function to check if we are in a new candle? Very simple. What we have to do is that, okay, this also returns a boolean because he's here inside an if. And what we are going to do is that, okay, new candle. And what we are going to do is that, first of all, we need to declare the number of bars that we have loaded. Here, <clears throat> this value can be empty at the beginning. So yeah, don't worry. And what we are going to do inside this function is that, okay, we are going to call, well, we are going to load the current number of bars. And... We put here the symbol, the current period. And now we have to check if the number of bars loaded is different than the current bars. We are going to do the following. First of all, we are going to update that value of the bars that we have here declared and current bars. And in this case, since these values are different, then we have to return true. We are in a new candle. In any other case, in case we don't go inside this if, then we are going to return false. That's it. Okay, I compiled. We don't have to compile yet because we have to create the operation closed and we have to create the operations. So this function, how do we create? Well, how do we put this function? Again, this returns a bool, but this function, we are not going to do it right now because we need to put the logic behind the operations. How do we do that? First of all, in order to open operations, we need to put here some things. First of all, we need to include a class from the file trade MQH. So now we have the class ctrade that will allow us to open trades. And now we also need 
an unsigned loan that we allow will allow us to store uh, the ticket of the positions. So we are going to call here this trade ticket. Perfect. So now what we are going to do is that here we are going to open a buy. But in order to open a buy, we need the current price. We need the current ask. So how do we do this? We are going to declare a double and we say, okay, ask is going to be equal to symbol info double. We are going to put here the current symbol. And remember, in order to make this bot general, we put symbol. Okay, symbol ask. And the problem is that this function, the symbol info double, can return a lot of decimals. And the problem with that is that if we try to open a position with a lot of decimals, we may have issues. So to prevent those issues, we have the function normalize double that will remove the excessive uh, uh, yeah, decimals. So we are going to say that we want the amount of digits that the current market has. Perfect. So we have to do the exact same thing for the cell, but in this case, it is not the ask, it is the bid. So we put here symbol bid, and that's it, we have this. Okay, now that we have the price, we are able to open positions. How? Trade, and we are going to put here buy, we call the method buy. You put the volume, for example, I'm going to put here one, then the current symbol, then the current price, we have here the ask, then the stop loss. Remember that if you open a buy, the stop loss is below. So here, we put this 100 points below the price. So what we do is that, okay, we subtract the value of the price minus the value of 100 points. 100 by the value of one point. As simple as that. Then what we can do is that we have to, we have to put the take profit. And the take profit is going to be above. So we put that the take profit is 200 points above. That's it, that's right. Another cool thing that we can do, well, another thing that we have to do is that we have to put here the trade cell. We have to open a cell. In this case, we don't have the ask. We have the bid. So we have to change all the ask for bids. But the thing is that in this case, when you open a cell, the stop loss is above. So what we are going to do is that the stop loss, we put here an addition and here we put a subtraction. Okay, now that we have these operations open, we have to uh, store the ticket. How do we do this? Trade ticket is going to be equal to the trade. We call the method result order. As simple as that. So we have to do the exact same thing here in the cell. And now we are ready to continue with this other function. It is as simple as saying, okay, return. And we call position select by ticket. In order to check if there is an operation open or not, we have this function that what it does is that it selects the ticket. The thing is that this returns true or false, and it returns true if there is a position open, or it did it well, and it also returns false if there is not a position open. We want the opposite because we are checking if the operation is closed. So that's why here I put the not gate. So we compile now, we have done, we don't have any mistake. And here we are going to go to the strategy tester. Remember, press view. Here you have control R, strategy tester. And we are going to select the bot, which is volatility index. That's it. Now we are going to select the market, which is the volatility index here. Okay, we are going to put five minutes, for example. Then, okay, everything, uh, real ticks, all that. Okay, visual mode. We click on start. And let's see. Okay. This is going very slow, so what we are going to do is that we are going to make this go faster, not that fast, <laughs> because everything goes too fast, okay? But here you can see that we have some operations open. So for example, here, after this cross, there is this buy cross position that was not good. After this other cross, there is this buy. And you can see that although here we have this cross, which is a sell, here the operation, this one, was still opened. So it ignored that. For example, we had a cross here and this operation was open, and you can see that here it depends on yeah on the market. So if it, if it goes up, it will touch the stop loss, and if it goes down, it will touch the stop, well, the take profit, and if it goes down, it will touch the stop loss, as you can see here. So guys, this is how you create a volatility index bot with EMAS, and you can see that it is actually very simple. In order to make your bots general, 
you just have to use these variables, the symbol and the period. Because now, if I want to test this, not in the volatility index, for example, in the EUR USD, it is going to work as well. The only thing that you have to be careful with is that, let's make this fast, you can see that it, it is still open position, is that some markets have uh, some differences. So for example, here, uh, you may go to a market in which 100 points, it is not enough, or you may go to a market that whatever, you just have to check those things. But for most cases, this is going to be enough and this is going to be general. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you understood everything. And if so, give it a like, share, subscribe, and see you in the next one.